Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Now today we're going to be having a look at the brand new Acer Tech Sim Sports La Prima range. The La Prima steering wheel, La Prima pedals and the La Prima 12 Newton meter wheelbase. But first things first, very important necessary disclaimer. I didn't pay for these items, Acer Tech Sim Sports sent me them for free to test and use. Although they don't see this video before it's published, and they've got no input at all in relation to what I say. Also, I will say as usual that this isn't a product review. I'm not a product reviewer. I'm a sim racer, exactly the same as you, and that's the opinion you're gonna get. Now, when I'm looking at products, I look at them as if I'm gonna buy them with my own money. And there's only four things that I'm really interested in. Firstly, how does it look? Because if it doesn't look right, I'm not gonna buy it. Secondly, What's the build quality like? Thirdly, how does it perform? And finally, is it value for money? Now, over my right shoulder is the Acertec Invicta 27 Newton meter wheelbase and the Acertec Forte 17 Newton meter wheelbase. So this is the little baby of the Acertec Sim Sports range and their cheapest option with regards to direct drive. But I'll tell you right from the off, this kit is not entry level. So I brought these other items in the Acertec Sim Sports range just to compare with the La Prima range and what you don't get. Now, firstly, let's have a look at the La Prima steering wheel. Now, I mentioned a short while ago, and we're going to talk about things that you don't get. So this is the La Prima wheel. So you've got, I think you've got 12 buttons. You've got two seven-way funky switches and three rotary encoders. And on the back, you just have your bog standard paddles. There's no DRS paddles and there's no clutch paddles on the bottom. There's no LEDs behind the buttons, although these three rotary encoders do light up. You've got two thumb encoders instead of six, which you get on the Forte. I'll just grab the Forte wheel so you can see the difference. So this is a fully loaded Forte wheel and there's the La Prima. Hopefully you can see the difference there. Uh, so we've got switches on the top. We've got more thumb encoders. We've got uh, LEDs on the side there. Uh, we, do, we do have the um, RPM LEDs on the top on the La Prima, but this has got less buttons. It's not the, the buttons aren't LED backlit. And on the back of here, we have the DRS paddles and we've got the dual clutch on the bottom. As you can see, they aren't on the La Prima. And you can add the extra paddles on the La Prima out of the box. But the good thing about the La Prima, you can upgrade the motherboard. They'll give you a new faceplate. Then you get the extra rotary encoders, the extra LEDs, and the ability to add the dual clutch and DRS paddles on the back. So you don't have to bin your old steering wheel. You can just upgrade this one. And this is the same experience that I had with the Forte. It's a really good steering wheel to use ergonomically it's really really good but i agree it's not to everybody's taste and this comes fitted with the acetec quick release as standard so that's the la prima steering wheel less functionality than its big brother the forte but still enough buttons still enough rotary encoders to get a really good experience so next up we'll talk about the la prima pedals so it's a two pedal set brake and accelerator it uses the same load cell that you will find on the acetec forte pedals it's the same construction for the pedals the same um, base plate everything is exactly the same but you just get less now if we look at the accelerator for example all this is controlled by a spring just on just on the bottom there and if we compare it to the invicta accelerator which you will find on the Forte as well. You can see there is a spring assembly on the back there and it's much, much smoother. But the same principles apply throughout the whole Acertec Sim Sports range. You can upgrade these pedals to these ones if you want. We'll just pop that down just for now. So the brake itself, really good. However, be warned, it is really stiff. You are gonna need some kind of strong rig to mount these. To get the best out of these pedals, they need to be mounted to a sturdy rig because they are very, very stiff. It does have the two-stage brake that you find on the Invicta and on the Forte. However, that can be dialed out if you wish. So there is no play in the pedal. So you can dial it in so there is a little bit 
of movement in the pedal just to simulate the slack on a real car before the pads touch the disc uh, but you can dial that out really easily and you can just change the elastomer in this really easy it's just one elastomer there is a green one which is a bit softer i've got the black one in there right now which is pretty darn hard but that helps me with trail braking and i'm much more consistent with a stiffer brake pedal and if you wish down the line you could actually upgrade this pedal set to the hydraulic system on the Acetec Invicta. So you, again, you don't have to bin your pedals, you can just upgrade them. So I'll show you what you don't get on the La Prima pedals that you would get on the Fortes or the Invictas. You don't get the, um, well, this one's all black, so it's not fancy like the Invictas. You don't get the throttle, you don't get the LEDs, which you would find on the Invicta pedals, uh, but everything else construction wise is exactly the same. I'll show you underneath and they're identical they've still got the um, cable there for the clutch if you did want to add the clutch i've got one here and that will attach uh, which way that way that will attach exactly the same as it would if you were using the forte or the invicta pedal so you can add the optional clutch the pedals are actually constructed from exactly the same material so if you look at the pedals on both of them they're both exactly the same pedals They've just got different face plates on the Invictors. So there's been no compromise in the quality of the products. You're just getting less for your money. And I don't know about you, but I don't need LED strips on my pedals. If that's gonna save me a couple of quid, happy days. So now we'll move on to the La Prima wheelbase. Now, again, it's made from exactly the same materials that the Forte wheelbase is and the Invicta. It uses the same 22-bit encoder. The resolution is exactly the same as you would find on the Forte and the Invicta. However, it's got less power. This has got 12 newton meters. The Forte has got 17, and the Invicta has got 27. And this one's not as responsive. I think the slew rate on this is four newton meters per millisecond. The Invicta, I believe, is nine. And the Forte, is that round about six and a half? Something like that. So this one is less responsive, although you really wouldn't notice it when driving. On the back, this one doesn't have much going on. It's got a USB port, it's got a port for the power switch and a port for the power supply. On the Forte and the Invicta, you get a five port USB hub and another port for a kill switch. This doesn't support that. As with everything Acer Tech, this is also upgradable. If you wanted to, you can buy another motherboard from Acer Tech. That will give you a five port hub on the back. It will give you the port for the kill switch. It will give you LEDs, and it will also upgrade the power from 12 to 18 Newton meters. I think it's absolutely genius what Acer Tech are doing. It's obviously gonna make financial sense for them to do this, to sell the upgrade kits down the line. But for us as consumers, we don't have to worry about moving this wheelbase on if we wanted to upgrade or if we wanted more power. Yes, we're gonna lose a couple of quid through the upgrade process, but probably nowhere near as much as you would lose if you had to move this on. So I've told you about the products. Let's go through my little checklist. Firstly, how does it look? Well, I think the Acer Tech Sim Sports range as a whole looks really good. Although I do agree that the steering wheel might divide opinion. Although I will say it's much, much better in person. The pedals look great. The wheelbases all look great. I really like the look of the way the Acer Tech Sim Sports brand has got their products looking. Quite futuristic, quite different to anything else on the market. I like it. Secondly, build quality, absolutely perfect on everything that I've used from Acer Tech. I've never had any issues. Genuinely, I can't fault anything at all with the whole Acer Tech range. Although maybe wires, if I'm gonna be picky, the likes of this wire here, could this be hidden somewhere? Is there a way that we could move that so you can't see it? And the USB port sits on the top here. Maybe that could be on the bottom. If I was gonna be really picky, they're the only things that I would complain about regarding build quality, although it there's nothing wrong with it. I would just rather not see it. Thirdly, 
We'll talk about performance. And I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Absolutely amazing. I'd used the Forte wheel before, so the La Prima wheel didn't come as a surprise. I'd used the Forte pedals and the Invicta pedals, so these didn't come as any surprise either. The accelerator was better than I expected it to be, just because it's on a spring here. There isn't a spring mechanism that you can adjust there. I didn't think that would be as good. I did shorten the travel somewhat, much, much better than I thought, although obviously it's not as good as the accelerator on the Forte or the Invicta. The brake was brilliant. I've been using these for probably around a week now. Any races that you've seen on my channel, I've been using this equipment in the last week. I had no issues with getting used to it, having jumped from the Heusingvel Ultimate. Now I have two pedal sets which I use and chop and change. I've got the Heusingvel Ultimate Plus, and I've got the Acer Tech Sim Sports Invictors, a chop and change. And those are my benchmarks when I'm looking at other pedals. And this isn't a million miles away. Yes, you don't get the adjustability that you get on the hoisting valves. These pedals are fixed where they are. But it was a really good experience. And my pace was where it normally is. It's onto the wheelbase. As I mentioned, I've been using the Acer Tech Invictor 27 Newton meter wheelbase. And I thought that dropping down to 12. I thought that it would be significant, but actually I was able to run this 12 Newton meter wheelbase at the strength I would normally run my wheelbase with no clipping. Yes, I was on the threshold. So I must use around about 10, 12 Newton meters when using the Invicta wheelbase. This was phenomenal. So the slew rate is four Newton meters per millisecond on this, significantly lower than the Invicta, although I didn't really notice it. All the settings and the software are exactly the same as that I would usually use. I just adjusted my in-game force feedback settings and it was excellent. This would be enough power for I would say 90% of sim races. I was actually really, really surprised and I actually tried my grid engineering steering wheel on here with the Acetec quick release and that is heavy. That's a heavy steering wheel and obviously the heavier the wheel rim the more toned down your force feedback gets. But it was fine. I just upped it in the sim a couple of clicks and it was fine, still no clipping. I was absolutely blown away, genuinely. So finally onto price. So for the 12 Newton meter wheelbase, the steering wheel and the pedals, it's gonna cost you 1,134 euros plus taxes and shipping. So in the UK, it's probably going to cost me around about 1,450 euros with tax and shipping. And then there might be some import duty on top of that. Is it value for money? If you're looking to upgrade your setup, I don't think you could go wrong with buying this bundle. I think it's exceptional value for money. And you've got the added bonus of being able to upgrade whichever one you want down the line if you wanted more power or if you wanted to change the brake on the pedals or if you wanted to add a dual clutch. So like I mentioned at the beginning, this is an entry level. When I think of entry level direct drives, I think of the CSL DD, the Camus C5, the Moser R9. This isn't entry level and I would quite happily use these on my rig every single day. Obviously I'm not gonna because I've got the Invicta wheelbase and the Invicta pedals, but if I didn't have those, and I put these on my rig, I would race with these every day quite happily. So I think Acer Tech Sim Sport have hit the nail on the head with this bundle. They obviously know what we want as sim racers. We want affordable, good quality gear. None of the materials used in this bundle is inferior to any of the other Acer Tech Sim Sport range. It's exactly the same materials. There's no compromise being made. They're just taking things off that you don't necessarily need. And that's a good thing. So I'll leave a link down below in the video description. That is an affiliate link. So if you buy one of these products using that link, then I will get a small kickback, which helps support the channel. But I'm not a partner of Acetec. You won't even have seen an Acetec Sim Sports logo on my channel during the race. And I've never received a penny from Acetec. So buy them if you like them. If you don't like them, don't buy them. It really, really doesn't matter to me, but there is a link in the description. And if you did buy through that, then I will get a small commission as I've just mentioned. So I want to say a massive thank you to Acer Tech Sim Sports for sending me these to test 
and news. I really do appreciate it. And thanks to you guys, because if you guys didn't watch and subscribe, then the likes of Ace to Take, well, they wouldn't even know about me. So massive thank you to you guys as well. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great week. See you later, cheers.